Hello, and welcome to another Orange Coast College math skills video. In this video, we're going to look at factoring by grouping. Now, before we get started, I'm going to assume that you understand and are comfortable with multiplication of monomials and polynomials, the distributive property, and factoring the GCF out of a polynomial. OK, let's get started. Let's begin with an example. Now, the first step of factoring any polynomial is to factor out the greatest common factor, or GCF. But if we look at these four terms, they have no common factors aside from 1. So there's nothing to do there. We, the GCF is 1. But if we look at the first pair of terms, 2x cubed minus x squared, those two terms have a common factor of x squared. The second pair of terms, 8x minus 4, has a greatest common factor of 4. So what we will do is we will factor from each pair the greatest common factor. So from the first two terms, the GCF is x squared, so we can factor that out. We'll have left over 2x minus 1. From the second pair of terms, we can factor out the GCF, which is 4. Left over, we will have 2x minus 1. So now we have two terms. Okay? Each term has a common factor of 2x minus 1. And we can factor out that binomial factor, 2x minus 1. And what we will have left over from the first term is x squared. And from the second term, we will have a 4. And that's it. You can check your work by simply multiplying those out and asking, did I end up where I started? Now, factoring by grouping is going to be a technique you're going to use when you notice that you have an even number of terms and pairs of terms have common factors. Okay, you'll notice in the last example, we had four terms. You could do it as long as you had four terms or six terms or eight terms or some even number. But what did we do exactly? Well, first step is always to factor out the GCF. Now in the last problem, it was one, but you always wanna check to make sure you factor that out. Once you factored out the GCF, right, we now have term pairs of terms and you wanna factor the GCF from each pair. All right. Now, once you factored out the GCF from each pair of terms, if all of your terms, remaining terms now, share a common binomial factor, factor that out. And then finally, you can check your work. And when you check your work, you're just reversing your factor. You're redistributing the binomial uh, factor that you factored out you're redistributing that back to each term here. So if you ended up with x minus 2 times x plus 3, you can simply redistribute the x minus 2 to the x and the 3 to end up back here. Okay. Then your last step would be to multiply these back out, each individually, and then make sure you got what you started with. Let's do another example. Again, we have this polynomial in two variables, now x and y, and we start by checking to see if we can factor out any common factors. But the GCF of these four terms is 1. The only common factor they all have is 1. So again, we start by pairing off the terms. And we notice the way it's written, the first two terms, x, y, minus y, have a common factor of y. The second two terms, negative 2x plus 2, have a common factor of 2. So we factor out the greatest common factor from the first two terms, which is y. And that leaves us with x minus 1. From the second two terms, negative 2x plus 2, the GCF is 2. So we will factor out 2, and that will leave us with negative x plus 1. Now you'll notice we did not end up with the same binomial factor in both terms. right? We have x minus 1 and negative x plus 1. But this factor is the opposite of this. So what we will do is instead of factoring out positive 2, we will factor out negative 2, and that will reverse the signs in this binomial factor. And so we'll end up with negative 2 times x minus 1. And now we have the exact same binomial factor in each term. Simply factor that out, and you'll have left over y minus 2. And that's it. You can, of course, check your work by remultiplying that out and checking to see that you ended up where you started. Okay, let's do one last example. 
All right, so our first step is we want to factor out the greatest common factor from all of these terms. Now, if we look at this, we have numerical terms in each one. We have factors of A, oops. We have factors of A and we have factors of B. Okay, so our greatest common factor, if we look at the numerical factors, the greatest common factor is uh, five. If we look at the A factors, right, uh, we do not have an A in two terms, so there's no common factor of A. Now for B, we do have a common factor of B in each one, the largest power of B that's present in all terms is B the first, that's the largest one. Okay, so now we look at what do we have left over. We factor out 5B from the first term, so it's 10A squared B squared, so we should have 2A squared B left in the first term. From the second term, we'll have negative 2b squared. From the third term, we'll have 3a squared. And from the fourth term, we'll have negative 3b. Okay. All right. Now we factored out the GCF. So we know that the greatest common factor of all of the remaining terms is now one. And now we can factor by grouping. So we look and we pair them up and we make sure that they're paired in such a way that they have common factors. We should be good here. So we'll pair them off like this. Okay, so we have our 5B here still. From the first two terms, we can factor out a 2B. And that will leave us with uh, a squared minus b, okay? And from the second two terms, we can factor out a three, and that will leave us with a squared minus b. Now, we have this factor out here is sort of outside, so let's just leave it alone. In these two terms, we have a common factor of a squared minus b we can factor that a squared minus b from these two terms. And if we do that, we're gonna be left with, so this 5b we had, you're gonna have a squared minus b, and then left over, once you factor that out, you have 2b and then plus three. Okay, and if you want to, you can go back and check your work. My suggestion is, is multiply this times this to get back to here. Let's go back to here and then multiply the 5b through it and see, did you end up with what you started with? And that's it. And that's factoring polynomials by grouping. Okay, once you've practiced this a lot, you can move on to factoring polynomials, which are differences of squares. All right, until next time, have fun.